Every single game last year was shit! Top 10 worst games 2017. Does anyone remember that this came out? That's pretty telling for a title as big as Mass Effect Andromeda. This game suffered from going to open world gameplay. Finely tuned narrative and combat encounters was lost in favor of driving around a desert. It could work as an open world, but the world itself has to be interesting. And there isn't really much to do aside from what can only be described as busy work. This busy work always comes back around, so you think you're doing something worthwhile, when really, who cares? Yes, I know, we've all seen the memes and the awful animation and voice acting from random idiots they pulled off the street. Yes, all of that sucks too. But they also ignored a bunch of established lore of the universe, and the world building is piss poor compared to what made everyone so interested in Mass Effect in the first place. And yes, I absolutely blame EA for all of this. How does a game that sucks this bad get to be so damn popular? PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds is awful. You drop from a plane into the middle of nowhere and right away, you either get murdered or you are completely alone for like 20 minutes, not seeing a single dude, and then suddenly get murdered out of nowhere. Cool. Fun. It's the technical issues that are the most egregious. The game still lags all the time, the interface is absolutely awful, the physics are glitchy as shit, aiming still sucks, and the whole thing runs even worse on Xbox One. Every now and then you think you're having fun and then BAP! Remember, this game is no longer in early access. Why does anyone play this? Who in their right mind would even bother playing it this much? What idiot puts a bunch of time into this broken mess of a game? I've been a big proponent of every game should be on the Switch. Hey guys, if you do this, maybe make sure your game friggin' works? WWE 2K18 is not a bad game, but the Nintendo Switch port is awful. Aside from the fact that the cartridge only has one game mode and like eight guys to play as, and you have to download the rest of the game from the internet, it runs like ass. This is not altered footage. This is its actual frame rate. You having a good time up there, buddy? Keep at it. I believe in you. And he's gonna fire up the crowd for his special move and oh good lord, his arm! This should not exist. There is no reason to revive Bubsy of all friggin' things. But you know what? It's not that awful of a game. It's super basic and has absolutely nothing special about it. It's also the best Bubsy game to date, for whatever that's worth. Don't get me wrong though, it still sucks. Bubsy is annoying. So take my advice, do not, under any circumstance, turn up his dialogue frequency to Bubsy. Come in, pounce! I made a huge mistake. The worst part about this wholly unnecessary reboot is that you can beat the whole game in under an hour. I have proved this on my gameplay channel, where I beat it in under an hour. Now based purely off first glance and how long it takes to beat it, how much do you think this game costs? The whole game costs $30. Speaking of wholly unnecessary reboots, what the hell is up with Double Dragon 4? There already was a Double Dragon 4 in arcades and it was rad. Even the SNES version is better than this. It's not a port or anything. It's an all new game that, for whatever reason, uses the NES aesthetic to help sell it. But if it's gonna be a sequel to the NES game, at least keep all the NES attacks and movesets. It actually degraded its combat, which is already incredibly simplistic. It has bare bones plot that literally repeats previous games, less weapons, less interesting enemies, and just less interesting gameplay than Double Dragon games over 20 years old. How does this keep happening? I already had a deal with an awful Double Dragon game just a few years ago. Who keeps making these? Oh look, it's a game that only got moderate notoriety because it got passed around in the YouTube circles. I say as a hypocrite. Hello Neighbor is a horror game, a term that I use loosely here, where you're a kid and need to get your ball back from this spooky neighbor. It's supposed to be a sort of randomly generated puzzle game where you have to find the switches and keys to progress and hide from the neighbor. Instead, it's a practice and frustration with its obtuse direction and bizarrely physics-based platforming? 
Like, I'm supposed to get up into this window, and I can't jump from the roof because of a radar dish, so I'm supposed to stack boxes and jump my way up? The jumping and movement controls just don't work for this. Ah! The only horror stuff comes from the forced heartbeat screen effect when the neighbor sees you in a weak-ass piano hit when you're caught. And when you are caught, nothing you've done is reset. There is no penalty for getting grabbed, so who gives a shit? So there's no fear of anything happening. And the graphics suck. See? Right there. This is not a game. This is an obvious attempt to get some sucker, any idiot, to buy this game when there's nothing else. Vroom in the Night Sky came out near the Nintendo Switch's launch on its eShop. In it, you are a witch girl on a moped, and you vroom in the night sky and pick up stuff. That's it. This is every stage. You slowly drive around and touch these things until you get enough and you can exit. Oh, you can also shoot magical lasers! The lasers pick up stuff. You get points for literally everything. Look it, I'm getting points just for pressing the break button. The only redeeming factor is whatever place they develop this from has no grasp on the English language, so the character dialogue ends up being hilarious. And worthless. Just like this game. I didn't play a whole lot of Sega Genesis growing up, but one of my favorites was always Road Rash. So I was actually excited for Road Rage, a spiritual successor. And it sucks. Why are the cars so small? Why do people sound like cars when I hit them with a bat? Why can I infinitely pop a wheelie and have no effect on my controls? I can never truly describe how awful the controls are without you playing it yourself, but this is me taking a tight turn with the brakes every time. Instead of races, you have an open city you can ride around in with absolutely nothing to do in it. Not that it matters since you get texts bringing you to the next stage anyway on your motorcycle, complete with bad voiceovers. Road Rage only got any kind of hype because it was using the legacy of Road Rash to help sell it and it completely ruined it all. Road Rage isn't half the game it pretends to be. Even the AI has given up. It's like it's begging for me to end it all. I honestly thought the game Troll and I was one of those games that's based on an animated kids movie. Turns out, nope, just a really, really bad game. The main draw that it's supposed to be co-op, one person playing as the kid and another as the troll, but I wouldn't dare make anyone play this with me. This game is made real good. Even getting footage for this video was tough. I got to a point where the game refused to load itself after reaching a checkpoint. I reloaded numerous times here until I finally started an all new game and then it finally worked. It's supposed to be a adventure game with a crafting system, because of course it does, with really boring combat and some platforming. By platforming I mean this dumbass kid who wants to be just like Nathan Drake, but uh, bad. I just love whatever this is that's happening in the cutscenes. You can tell just how unfinished this game is. Ideas aren't fully fleshed out. I feel like the only one they really ran with was having some kind of co-op game, which isn't a bad idea. In fact, I think this could redeem Troll and I to an extent. I could probably forgive everything about it for providing a unique two-player experience and it crashed. All right, never mind. I want to fully explain this one. Star Wars Battlefront 2 is easily the shittiest game this year for a multitude of reasons. Almost none of it due to the gameplay itself. There's a lot of basic stuff here that isn't great. There are balance issues like you wouldn't believe, and the game absolutely still lags to shit all the time. But the big thing really is the design around loot crates. You can only get upgrades for whatever class or character you're playing by getting these crates. The thing is, it is completely blatant from the get-go that this isn't fair. Whoever has the better upgrades just has a better character and will beat you in a fight. And you can slowly craft these upgrades using in-game materials, but that takes forever. So instead, you could spend real life money to get these upgrades instead. However, it's random, so you may not even get the power-ups for the class that you wanted. It's straight up gambling. If that isn't bad enough, there's the character unlocks. 
Everyone wants to play as Darth Vader. You earn in-game currency after each match. Here, look. Here's a general idea of how many credits you get. Not bad, right? Now, to unlock someone like Darth Vader, it currently costs 10,000 credits to get him. Wow, you may be thinking. That seems like it would take hours. Here's the thing. He used to cost 60,000 credits. And that was just for Darth Vader. Now imagine that to include Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Leia, Darth Maul, the Emperor, and a few others. This system was so flawed and had so much backlash that the credit system was changed and the costs of heroes was reduced. Furthermore, purchasing upgrade crates with real money was completely removed. But that's just a band-aid though on the broken system. That doesn't fix the fact that the whole game was designed around this loot crate and upgrade system. Instead now, you still have a sense of unfair play by other players who will just straight up have an advantage over you because they deal more damage or can straight up heal at the push of a button. The worst part is, I do have fun with Battlefront 2 at times. There's something there, deep underneath the greed and manipulative practices of EA. There were so many shitty games last year that I know I missed some shit. What shit did I miss? Tell me in the comments down below. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to this channel for more sweet videos on shit like this. Here's 2018, where it's gonna be just as bad. Whee!